Hey everyone, welcome back to another LiveX unboxing where today we are looking at the Broadcast Pix Switch 6, also known as the BP Switch 6. Now this is a great TriCaster competitor um, that I really uh, suggest looking into. They're doing some really cool stuff and trying to be future proof. So let's just skip right to it um, and we'll start talking about it as we look at the features. Now as you can see, I have already unboxed this. That's because you don't want to watch what I had to do to get this out of the box. This is a big server, it's kind of heavy. I look looked really lame when I was getting it out, so I will save you the trouble of having to watch that and my embarrassment, and I put it on the table already. So sorry if you're expecting an actual box, but this is a post-unboxing unboxing. So let's take a look. Uh, in here is actually uh, one of my favorite keyboards, the MK120 with mouse. It is wired. Logitech's not doing too many wired keyboards now. Um, they've moved completely to wireless, but I hate wireless stuff for production. Um, so I love this keyboard a lot. It's so simple. It has the number pad for a lot of shortcuts you might need to do and for any data entry and stuff. And this is a really great keyboard. Uh, but I'm a nerd, so I care about that stuff. <laughs> um, then over here is the accessories box. Um, so inside there's a little stuff going on. Uh, we got a bunch of cables and stuff. I'll take these out in a minute. Um, also this piece of paper uh, talking about what they're doing. So this guy is a switcher that will also have 3D motion graphics and be ready for IP video. So that's why I think it's really future forward thinking. Um, TriCaster is, but you kind of need to get a, your own unit that is ready for IP. This seems like it'll be very adaptable for if you need to um, go to a SMPTE 2110 um, setup. So I'm gonna get rid of this box and let's take a look inside with the biggest whip I've ever seen. Um, this has a ton of outputs. So over here, you'll see that there are composite component cables, also control if you have a deck that can be controlled uh, over um, a wired connection. Um, you also have audio. It looks like these are quarter inch. I'm sorry, I'm not an audio engineer, so I could be completely wrong. Uh, but it looks like you have quarter inch inputs and outputs over here. So this will probably be how you, like really only for audio, I would imagine. Um, and you also have S-Video. So this is good in case you do have any proprietary things, some old stuff that you need to get in. Um, this will just screw into the back. There's a capture card, a PCI slot in the back, and you could use this for all of this extra stuff. So uh, fortunately, uh, we do not need to worry about that here. We are completely in SDI and HDMI, um, so we don't need to ever think about that stuff. Um, over here are also um, some Thunderbolt cables. Uh, there's a Thunderbolt slot here in the back, which could be good for inputs or outputs. I'm imagining, uh, th this is PNY, so I imagine it's for the graphics card that's in the back. Um, and so, which was probably what those Thunderbolt ports are on the back that I could see. I'll show you in a sec. Um, so this is great if you have a ton of monitors, if you need more outputs to go over Thunderbolt to DVI um, and then convert it from there, uh, you could do that. This also has what looks like a display port um, as well. And also is the IEC and the manual. It looks like it has an X. 299 Tomahawk Arctic. So if you could um, read through this manual, it'll give you all the information that you need for using this thing. Um, so, and finally, there's a key on the front panel here. You can lock it so someone can't turn it on or off. Um, so the keys are for it right here. So do not eat this. Uh, so I'm gonna put everything back in the bag. And we'll get rid of this as well. And let's take a look at the device. So I'm gonna turn it towards you over here to see a detail, position that here. Um, so to turn it on and off, you'll do through here. Um, you could open up these doors here. And you have your on button and your reset button as well as the Windows license uh, right here if you need that. And a USB on the front, which is really great because if this is in a rack unit, you'll actually be able to plug into the front, which is super convenient. And you don't even need the doors open. You could do it at any time. So uh, that's really great so you don't have to go to the back anytime you need to plug in a USB device. So that's pretty much it for the front. Let's take a look at the back. Cool, I got that right there. So um, working our way from this side, uh, there's the IEC and power button. Um, we also have two backward 
back, um, back fans over here um, and an HDMI input and output. I imagine that this is going directly to the, to, um, the graphics card, um, but I'm not entirely sure, but that's a great way to bring out an HDMI source or a uh, HDMI monitor or bring in an HDMI source. Um, we also have all of the motherboard I.O. over here. Um, it's looking like if you need to get audio into or out of this, you'll need to use the motherboard ports, which aren't so great. They're 3.5 millimeter. Normally you want something more robust than that, so that's when you'll use that whip uh, that has the quarter inch. Um, so moving over to this, here's the Thunderbolt that I was talking about. Based on the converters that it gave us, I imagine this is also to the graphics card, but it might be used also as an input um, to bring in some Thunderbolt sources, which would be really, really cool, especially for the IP stuff. Uh, speaking of IP, it looks like this is labeled panel. So Broadcast Picks has a really, really great panel uh, that I really suggest you look at and um, do the capabilities of this, that it's data-driven, it's so in bed with its graphic system, New Blue, um, that having a really good panel controller uh, is very important to the operation of this. And so they have buttons that have LED titles that you could customize and do that the whole way. So I imagine you do need a really great Great network connection. So that is an additional card. So there's a LAN port you could see on the motherboard here, and then an actual separate um, connection. I imagine this goes directly to the panel. Not sure if you could network more things or if you could use this for IP video. Um, I don't know. It says it's up upgradable online, so I don't know if um, you need to add something to this extra PCI slot or if you can just use that as your. Um, port for your cameras, um, but it is starting to get IP capable. This is kind of like the bridge unit that goes from SDI sources and clearly like composite and component stuff to the IP video world. Um, so moving on, our capture cards, they look like they are Blackmagic mini recorders. So that's a, you could either use HDMI or SDI, but that gives you three in over here. And then this has that whip that we were looking at earlier and more SDI IO. Um, so you could plug in any BNC here. Now I could take the top off of this and probably change them out. Um, I have to look more in depth to see what is compatible with the software, but looking at the website, they talk about AJA cards and they talk about Black Magic cards, and those are the biggest ones anyway, so I think that it'll be pretty fully featured. Um, so now to talk a little bit more about the software and why I think it's so great is it is very similar to TriCaster, but you also can integrate new blue to it. You could also integrate their CGs if you have really intense data stuff, um, and it's really meant for a one-person band situation um, that is doing the job of a graphics operator, audio, TD, director, um, which we tend to find ourselves in more and more, um, it's great that you could do this all in one unit. Um, one thing also I noticed is its streaming capabilities are not so robust. Uh, right now it can only do up to 720p. I imagine that's just a hardware limitation due to how much stuff it could do. Um, so I would probably bring an external encoder and just spit video out to this, uh, out from this to that encoder. Uh, same thing with recording, it can only record up to 1080i, so if you are doing 1080p60 or you're in in 4K, um, you won't be able to use this really as a good recorder, so I would do that externally, but if I'm shooting in 4K, I'm gonna want external records anyway, so it's really not that big of a deal breaker. Um, so like I said before, this is ready for 4K. Uh, you probably will need to just change out the capture cards that come with the base model. Um, but it'll be really, really great when you, if you're in a 4K production to have a great software switcher that's ready for that type of stuff. Uh, because right now, um, besides ATEM, um, and uh, TriCaster, uh, there's not a ton of um, options for 4K production. So this will be a really, really solid option. Um, they also have really great customizable multi-views uh, for clocks, weather, all the other information. Um, you could really build it out. And one thing that I'm really, really excited for is their IP control stuff. Um, so you can have anything that's on the network for this control certain elements. So you could have, kind of like uh, Chiron, I believe, has is an iPad app or an iPhone app or something. So your graphics producer can be down by the screen scoreboard and be inputting data that's then fed to here, and you could switch the show from another IP controller, uh, a lot of cool stuff. And similar to that is the BPNet, uh, which also looks really cool. That is basically the cloud version of that, and you could control things over IP from anywhere in the world. Um, you probably just need to set up some networking stuff, um, but then you could access this, um, start messing around, maybe even switch the show from the cloud, which is pretty much a big dream of mine. So uh, a lot of really cool features. So unfortunately for unboxings, we can't really look at the software, but and I think that is the key player in a product like this. So I would suggest checking out their website, looking through everything. Um, it's a new person to the space, uh, or it's a new switching software to the space, and I'm really excited to have a new person in town to compete with TriCaster and all those stuff, um, because you know it just makes everyone better and better and better. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this unboxing, uh, make sure you check out the rest of them by subscribing to our channel and following us, and see you on the next one.